Ladies and gentlemen, something weird has happened to my village. But it's not just my village. It's my whole country is behaving like this right now. Everything is orange. Everything in the Netherlands is orange today. That's because orange is the national color of the Netherlands. And that's the color that patriots in the Netherlands wear on special occasions. And today is a national holiday. It is King's Day. King's Day is the birthday of our king, Koning Willem Alexander. Oh, yes. We have a king. The Netherlands is a monarchy, believe it or not. We have a royal family, in fact. And what we do during King's Day is we basically, we get drunk and we eat a lot of orange colored stuff. I don't know, I'm not the one who made this nonsense up. <laughs> I will take any excuse to consume tasty food, however, and today I'm going to show you. That's right. In the Netherlands, the birthday of our king or queen has always been a national holiday. If we have a queen, we call it Koninginnedag, it means Queen's Day. If it's a king, it, it uh, translates to Koningsdag or King's Day, the birthday of the king or queen. Yes, the Netherlands is a monarchy. We have a royal family. I do have to say, I am not a big fan of royal families, but I'll use any excuse to eat tasty sna snacks. Oops, sorry, I had the hiccups. I'm a little bit tipsy, to be honest. I had something to drink today. I I'm not a drinker. I don't drink alcohol that much. But uh, holidays are always an excuse, especially national holidays. So let's get started. Let me tell you about my YouTube channel. It used to be a nice channel about insects and nature, but slowly it has all turned into food thanks to you. That's because we have a goal on a website called Ko-Fi, and every time we hit the tips goal, I promise to make a new episode of me showing people unique Dutch snacks. And for some reason, turns out it's really popular. Now, here's the fun thing. I just had this snack, and this is called a tompoes. Yes, a tompoos. I assumed that it was just a silly thing, but turns out there is a really rich history behind it. And I just bring up Wikipedia. A tompoos or tompoos is a pastry in the Netherlands and Belgium. It is the local variety of the Millefeuille or Napoleon introduced by an Amsterdam pastry baker and named after Admiral Tompoos. The stage name of the Frisian dwarf, Jan Hanema. What? What? In the Netherlands, the tompoos is iconic and the market allows little variation in form, size and color. It must be rectangular with two layers of puff pastry. The icing is smooth and pink, but occasionally white. Well, today it's orange because it's King's Day. For many years, however, the top layer has been orange on Koningsdag or King's Day. Aha! I was too early. And a few days before. It may also be orange colored when the national football team plays in large international tournaments. Wow! The filling is invariably sweet. Yellow pastry cream. 
Tom pusses are sometimes topped with whipped cream. Variations with different fillings or with jelly are comparatively rare and not called Tom Poos. So it turns out that in this, this little thing, there is like three centuries of history. Like they were introduced in the 1800s, apparently, which is pretty crazy. So today we are going to have a King's Day Tom Poos and I'm going to show you what it tastes like. Hmm. I'm a Dutch person, but it's been a while since I've had one. Hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. The thing about Dutch people is we like to invent food that is really awkward to eat. That makes you spill cream everywhere. If you've seen the Bosse Bull video, the one where I was eating this pastry filled with cream that was spilling everywhere, yeah, that's, that's the kind of food we like to make for some reason. I guess we like being awkward in social situations and torturing people by giving them food that will inevitably spill everywhere. Like, how do you even eat this stuff without spilling? Now, I'm gonna be honest. My eating habits are not even that bad compared to other YouTubers on the platform. But this is just impossible to eat in a civilized way. Literally impossible. I'm all covered with sugar. I do have to say they taste really good. So today I think it's already episode number 7 of this series, right? Some of you have watched me eat a lot of stuff now. For already 7 episodes. And I'm gonna say this is probably the favorite thing I've had in this series. I don't know why. It's very simple food. But it's the simplicity that makes it good. Like it's just... It's like this cream filling. It tastes very creamy. With this hard, hard pastry uh, coating, I guess. The two layers of pastry. And on top there's like this really sweet sugary coating. And the sugary coating... It's like a frosting, right? And it tastes very... It gives this very... Um, small layer of sweetness on top of like this fat creamy layer. And it's crunchy. And it, I don't know, the combination is really good. I like the Tom Poos, ladies and gentlemen. I admit it, I like them. Oh God. I just wish there was a more civilized way to eat them. I'm not that civilized of a person. I don't care about good manners and etiquette. But still, you still want to eat a snack without spilling cream everywhere. Like you're 13 years old and watching Totally Spice. That's the level of cream spilling here. Oops, did I just make that joke? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> I mean, look at it. The cream filling, it tends to get squished when you bite into it. Like these layers of pastry, they squish the cream together and it just spills out. The thing about Dutch snacks is they often taste wonderful, but eating them is a disaster. I can't believe this thing was invented in the 1800s. Like... Do we have that much history in my country where even silly pastries are like two, three hundred years old and date back to the times of Napoleon? Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I like these things. I like them. I should eat them more often. Really? I don't know why. It's, it's been years since I've had a Tom Poos. 
but they're re they're actually really tasty. They're like this this creaminess, the sweetness is like a combination of uh, of savory and sweet. Like the cream filling, it makes it really savory. You really taste the milky cream-like flavor on top of the, I don't know, this very subtle but hard to ignore sweetness. It's a very good combination. I, I think this is the thing I've eaten in this in this small YouTube series that I like the most right now. I I just wish. I really wish people would make a version of this that doesn't fall apart and spill all over your clothing and your hands. My hands are all sticky and covered with sugar. It's just so awkward to eat this. Mom, I need a napkin. Last but not least, in the Netherlands, there is one food that's really popular and they're called sushis. And essentially, the best way to translate what a sushi is, is to call it a cream puff. Now these cream puffs, they look really silly, because there's a holiday in the Netherlands. It's King's Day. And I'm going to destroy this one for science to reveal what's in the inside. I'm going to break it apart. Can you guys see it? Oops. Sorry about spilling it, but as you can see on the inside, don't worry, I'm going to eat the rest. I'm just going to dissect one for science. So it's like literally filled with cream. It's a cream puff. It's this small pastry with this uh, interesting, it's almost bread like dough. It's not dough that you would associate with a cake. It's like bread like, filled with cream and uh, sugar. It tastes pretty well. Home. Wow. You know what? Here's the thing. On YouTube I like to make fun of the Netherlands. I like to make fun of our culture. I like to make fun of our food, because I think traditions should be taken with a grain of salt. But these things... Damn. They're really good. I'm not joking, man. Like this silly... Orange frosting covered... Things... They're really good. Here, look. Check out the cream filling. Damn! Wow! I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't know how to describe this, but I really like this. In this series I've made fun of a lot of Dutch foods. I've called them stupid, I've called them weird or awkward. But once in a while you get something that's actually really tasty. And that's these things! I'm serious! Wow, my brain. Whenever I eat one of these, my brain is feeling satisfaction. I think it's the fact that I really like creamy stuff. Like uh, when it comes to sweets or pastries, I don't really like the sugar rich ones. Like the ones who are really, really super sugary. I tend to go for the creamy stuff, like cream, milk products, diary. I like it sort of stuff. And when something is filled with cream, I don't know, I just, I just like it a lot. That's just how I work. Man, these things are tickling my brain. I'm, I'm really enjoying this right now. I'm gonna be honest, I'm really enjoying these uh, holiday festivity sushis. Mm -hmm. 
Of course. When you go to the Netherlands and you buy these, of course they're not going to be coated with an orange um, sugared frosting. When you go to the Netherlands, they're probably going to have like this layer of, um, of dough. That's what they're usually covered with. A layer of dough. That's what we call our what we cover our sushis with. It's just because it's a natural a na national holiday that we just coat everything with orange frosting. But I, it really adds to the experience. So uh, this is me enjoying something. Yeah. Man, it's tasty. It's really good. It really hits the spot. The thing about me is I'm not I'm not that big on uh, on candy. I'm not that big when it comes to sweet stuff. You know, I, I like to I like to prefer savory foods over over sweet foods. I don't really have a sweet tooth. I would pick a hamburger over candy any day of the week. I would pick a sausage or a curry over any type of candy any day of the week. I'm not really that much into sweet candy-like foods. But this pastry, this sugared pastry with frosting on it, it's probably the best I've had in this series, I'm not joking. Like, it's, it's really damn good. <laughs> it's really fucking good. I don't know, it's like drugs, man. Here's the last one. Unfortunately, I'm on a diet, I'm trying to lose weight. But this stuff is like drugs to me. Like these sushis. Here goes the last one. This is just happy chemicals in my brain. Really, I don't know how to describe this. It just feels so good. Have you ever eaten something that tastes so good it feels like drugs? That you like can't stop eating it? That's what these things are. Wow. Mmm. It's so tasty. It's really nice, man. Ooh. That was it. I finished my plate, ladies and gentlemen. I finished my freaking plate. That was all that you're going to get out of me today. I'm satisfied. Can you tell me? Can you tell that I'm satisfied? I really am. Let me just enjoy the effects of this natural drug called Tompus and Sushis. The thing about Dutch food is that Dutch foods they tend to have really simple ingredients. Uh, some of these foods are really old. The Netherlands is actually a really old country. I'm not a nationalist, but I like talking about the Netherlands because it's a country that doesn't get much attention. Like we have only 17 million inhabitants. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the history of the Netherlands, it goes back thousands of years and it's, it's pretty ignored uh, very frequently. So I, I guess I just like to represent a little bit of the culture. I feel like the Netherlands is a very misunderstood country when it comes to an international level. Not many people understand what's going on here in this country because it's so small and misunderstood. And I guess what I really want to say is that uh, it's interesting that I am the one who gets to represent this country. There's not that much Dutch YouTube channels either showing Dutch, Dutch food on YouTube. That's very unusual. 
and um, I'm honest when it comes to when when I don't like something, when I don't like the taste. I'm just one person, of course. I don't re represent the opinion opinion of thousands of people, but I don't know. Today, I'm gonna be honest. Today, I really enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed really making it. I think this was one of the most satisfying episodes I've made. I really like the creamy stuff. I go crazy for it. It's like drugs to me. I'm gonna be honest. So, uh, I hope all of you are having a good day. Because I'm certainly having one. Thanks to you! Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, I just went back to the kitchen to get a little bit more of these sushis. Maybe it's because I've had some beer today and I'm a little bit drunk. I'm gonna be honest, when I'm making this video... <coughs> I am a little bit drunk, you can hear it, I have the hiccups. <coughs> oh my god, I had more beer than I usually do. But these things are just so damn good. And I don't know if it's because I'm intoxicated or because they're really that good. But man, I'm enjoying this experience too much. Wow. That's really what I needed, man. Today the food is like feeling a massage to my brain. Mm-hmm, man. It really feels and tastes that great. I'm not sure why they put these googly eyes on it to make them cute. I guess that it's like um, some edible thing. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> I'm happy to make this episode. Now, let's cut the crap. Let's cut to the chase. Let me tell you about this series. This series is called uh, Coffee with Bart. And um, let me tell you how this... Um, movement started. It was actually many, many, many months ago that this, uh, the idea for this YouTube series started. You see, I promised people that I have this crowdfunding platform, it's called Ko-Fi. Every time I raise $55 in cash online, I raise $55 and in return for every $55 raised, I'm going to make one episode of what's called Coffee with Bart. Now, um, I've kept my promise. But after keeping this promise, the first episode was made. And then a second, and a third, fourth, fifth. And I was getting a little bit out of hand. Like now, every two or three days, people are filling the new $55 goal. Forcing me to make another food episode. Which is crazy, because this YouTube channel is about insects, not about food. Am I complaining? No, I'm not complaining. I'm being paid to eat delicious food. Of course I'm not complaining. I just think it's hilarious that me, a YouTuber who's been filming moths, for over eight years is finding success in showing Dutch food on YouTube. I just think that's so crazy. Mm -hmm. But then I realize eating is a social experience. Eating is a social thing that you want to share with friends. And I realize that's why mukbang videos are so popular on YouTube. YouTubers eating food and getting millions of subscribers with just eating food. I don't know why, but now I understand. Like, the experience is social, it's interactive. Maybe I struck gold by doing this with Dutch food, because not many people know a lot about the Netherlands, our culture. It's new, it's fresh, it's original. So 
So thank you guys. You made me realize that there's a hole in the market for Dutch food videos. There's probably a lot of potential for any YouTuber who wants to get views to show Dutch people food. Now, today is the time I'm going to read the tips to you. See, here's the thing. Every time that I raise $55 on this, on this website that's called Ko-Fi, it's a website where you can um, send people a small financial tip, a donation, and every time you hit a certain amount of cash on this website, you can put like a goal, a reward in turn to reward the people who crowdfunded you. And I decided every $55 I raise, I'm going to show you uh, a typical Dutch snack from my country, the Netherlands. And um, I didn't expect this to become this popular. But we are at episode number seven now, seven times we have hit the $55 goal. And today I'm going to rate some of the donations some of you sent. First one is from um, Mr. Uh, Lane Hunter. Thank you. I have no idea why YouTube demonetized your videos, given what they allow. I know I learn a great deal, so thank you. And this person... Uh, Generously tip me ten dollars, Mr. Lane Hunter. Thank you so much for the ten dollars. It is very much appreciated. I will keep your ten dollars in my wallet and I will use it to make videos for you. I will spend it on uh, a lot of stuff like bus tickets or moth eggs. So I really have the free time to make the episodes I want. Oh my God. You're not going to believe this. The next tip is by... Yep, he's the MVP. We all know his name by now if you watch this series. Mr. Surreal is back. And I believe his real life name is Aaron. You will eat the fire noodles, preferably on a live stream. But either way it will happen. To answer your question, we have an international food store here in America. But if the snacks aren't there... And a trip to the Netherlands is in order. Aha, so this is... Let me give you some background information on Mr. Surreal. Which I think I'm allowed to say your first name, which is Aaron. I think I'm allowed to say that because you used uh, your first name to tip me in, in the previous video. Uh, this person is like the main sponsor of the last three episodes. Like I said, if we hit a $55 tips goal, that's when I make one of these episodes, Coffee with Bart. Not earlier, not later. $55, every time we raise it, I make one of these episodes. And it's Mr. Surreal that's been helping us towards the tips goal for the last three episodes. So this person is like, at this point, this person is our main sponsor. Like our number one sponsor, uh, Aaron or Surreal, if you're watching this, thank you so much for your generosity. It seems that you've uh, sent me another $48 tip, uh, or sorry, $46 tip. That's a lot of money to give to a stranger on the internet, to be honest. $46 to a stranger on the internet. I can only say thank you so much and um, what I'm going to do with your money is the following. I'm going to take it from PayPal. I'm going to withdraw it to my bank account. I have a personal bank account. When I receive tips from Ko-Fi, I take them to my bank. I save the money and what I do with it is I buy a lot of bus tickets, train tickets and that's because I use public transport a lot. Currently it's spring, the sun is coming back, it's a, it's a nice sunny day. And uh, what I want to show people is like vlogging nature, showing the environment, me interacting with nature. So this series is uh, helping me raise funds to do that kind of stuff. It's pretty interesting, it's pretty cool. 
thank you, Mr. Uh, Cyril slash Aaron for uh, supporting me on Cove High this much. I apologize for having the hiccups. It's, it's hard to get rid of it. it I, I'm a person who gets hiccups a lot. I don't know why. It's just a thing that I have a lot. Uh, but thank you for your generosity. It's really cool to see how many people support this weird little mini-series of mine. Obviously, I'm not complaining. I'm being paid to eat tasty food, so it's like a dream job for most people. But it's really helping me uh, make the moth videos, the uh, nature videos, the educational stuff that we are all waiting for. The only reason I can make cool stuff like the moth cycles is because the fundraising that I'm doing on series like this. And for which I thank you. I don't know, uh, Mr. Cyril slash uh, Aaron, I don't know if it's possible for you to import sushis. I don't know if it's possible for import uh, tompus. But if you can, I highly recommend it. Because uh, my opinion, this was one of the, some of the most tasty stuff I had in this video series. This is Bart from the Netherlands. Hope to see you guys again in a later episode. Bye bye.